Got your questions? Uh, thought up in your head? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got my, I, I do. Yeah, I do. I mean. Yeah, because you might need to direct me in this, you know, keep me in the, keep me in the, the sphere of whatever in coherency. Yeah. <laughs> Because it's pretty, it's a little more abstract. Well, it, yeah, it's a little more abstract and it's, you know, it can get out of. It can get out of hand quick. It can get out of hand quick. <laughs> um, <laughs> the hands are quite large, so it's like. <laughs> God hands are really big. So yeah, like right, that. right. It was a God form joke. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I got it. <laughs> it's okay. Um, yes, yeah, so the next thing that we're going to talk about here is traditionally called assuming the God form. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I, I don't is know. It? Is it? Yeah. I mean, I guess, well, there are specific exercises where you would do something super focused like this, whereas this is maybe a more personalized version of that exercise. Yeah. And it's not even, I mean, do you think of it as an exercise or do you think it, of it more as like an overarching kind of philosophy or mindset or way of orienting yourself to what you're doing that just makes everything work better. I mean, I, I think it encompasses all of that, all of that. Yeah. I, I think in the beginning, like most of these things, it, it's a technique first, you know, like, Oh, we're going to do this in technique. Now let's, let's look at the, you know, the point by points, you know, here's the, here's the aspects of it that you need to sort of have in hand and, and how do you utilize it and what's it good for. And, <clears throat> and then as you start to, in, you know, incorporate it more or uh, get more comfortable with it and you see the benefits of it in one thing, you're going to, you know, extend it out into other areas too. Mm -hmm. And there's, uh, uh, you know, you'll remind me at the end if I forget, but, uh, but uh, you know, I also want to give uh, some cautionary things about the technique as well, you know, so because there, there is this, uh, uh, like there is this sort of uh, tipping point too, where, uh, <laughs> again, this one teacher used to call it abusing the technique. You know, you find the technique is so valuable, a, a specific technique is so valuable, you start incorporating it into everything, right? And so it's sort of the abuse of this technique because you don't have to go any further. And, um, you know, I find that, uh, you know, people will just, it's a natural tendency for human beings to do that, right? It's like that old idea of, you know, if you give a man a hammer, every problem looks like a nail, right? So, uh, you know, these, some of these m more overarching uh, techniques, you know, can be incorporated into a lot of different things that we do. And so, but you don't want to make it the only technique that you use. You, you'll become lopsided, right? It becomes, you know, it's like only working, you know, one arm, right? And so you become a guy with, you know, one giant arm and then, you know, everything else is completely unbalanced. So it's, um, uh, there is a little bit of that, you know, and, and we'll sort of go over that at the end, what, okay. what not to do with this technique. Sure. Um, and before we talk about it mm -hmm. too much more in the abstract, just take us through like what it is that we're going to do and how we're going to apply it to seeing. Sure. Uh, I'll give you the traditional and then how we're going to use it, right? So traditionally, assuming the God form was uh, thinking that the image of something, even though we know obviously that the, you know, most images of uh, deities, uh, demigods, uh, whatever, uh, angels, all of that stuff are, you know, they're, they're fabricated in our heads, basically, the or images of the them. images of them, right? So it's, um, you know, we don't actually know, you know, unless you've had direct contact. And even if you've had direct contact, who's to say which one is, is correct or not correct, right? It's like, there's not like a, you know, like, it's like looking at me or looking at you, right? It's like, okay, we can identify ourselves that way because, you know, that's, that's who we are here right now. But, you know, the essence of us isn't our physical structure. Well, the same thing with, with those entities, if we want to group them, right? It's like they have a, you know, they can assume a physical form ish, you know, and uh, you know, an image like form, but you know, is that actually what they look like? No, I and most of those much say no. <laughs> and is, are most of those images uh, designed around the a symbolic representation of what the essence of that 
Correct. Energy yeah. or personality or yeah, that's exactly it, it. It's not so much a you know a uh, photographic you know representation. It's more of a you know each aspect of those forms represents something. You know there are correspondences that go with that, right? So it's sort of like a person's idealized you know uh, like if we take uh, you know. Um, uh, Toth or Hermes, you know, it's like what what are the aspects of that? You know, wh what does the picture represent on a on a correspondence level, right? So, uh, you know, ibis headed god or whatever it was, right? And of course, that had different connotations for people who were just learning about it now than it did for ancient Egyptians, right? So th there was a whole you know, there's a whole list of correspondences that go with all of those images. And so, and even the dress, right, and the colors and all of those things, they add to that. And, you know, and even the, uh, the objects that they're holding in their hands at different times, it represents a different stage of, of that or a different attribute of that deity at that time, right? A certain power or specialized faculty or right. something that they're that they represent mastery in or something. Exactly. Or even like with Catholicism, if we want to say with that, like like all three aspects are supposedly God, right? But they are represented differently. There's God the Father, it's an old guy in the clouds and a throne and all of that. And, you know, Christ was, you know, the guy, the son, right? And so he was younger and, you know, all of the attributes that go with that and the Holy Spirit, which, you know, can be represented by tongues of flame or a dove or all of that, you know? So it's really just, it's one of those things where they all have different, you know, the correspondences that go with the image helps to elicit a response in our minds, you know, of what that, you know, if we know what that's supposed to mean, then it will bring us, you know, to that, that focal point, basically. So... Uh, so that being said, you know, when we, uh, when this was developed, whenever that was, I mean, nobody really knows. I mean, m most ancient societies had some form of this. Um, so, uh, it was when you got to a certain almost devotional type practice, you would do, uh, you know, let's say you had a patron, you know, let's just say in for like a patron saint or, yeah patron saint anything like that so you would uh during the course of your um exposure to that and even you know devotional practices to that one aspect of that would be you know imagining yourself to be that so you know the jesuits were great with this with you know the uh spiritual practices of saint ignatius where you imagined yourself to be Christ, you know, walking through the villages, and it was the, sort of the end point of that exercise, and and um, and seeing through their eyes and experiencing things through their touch and all their senses being online with that, and so it it was thought that that would um, imbue you with you know certain aspects of of that entity, you know, so that you would see things in the way that they would see things, and you would interact with things in the way that they would interact with them, and and uh, you know have the observational view that they would have, or even some of the abilities that they would have, you know, so healing or whatever it would be at the time. <clears throat> so, and a very common practice, and the more in depth that you could get to that the better it was, right? And so they would call it assuming the God form. So uh, putting yourself in that place and merging the two together, uh, which is a little different than just thinking that you are that thing, right? It's like, you know, in, in assuming it, it's like you're moving into that, like say a seed of your consciousness is moving into that and then growing into that image. And that image would immediately have some sympathetic resonance with you right so that's the idea again we're back to sympathy which is you know just a huge uh band of um of um, understanding with the practices that we do right um it's a resonance and entrainment with that resonance whatever that is vibration so and that it imbues a specific type of um uh you know again attributes to you depending on how open you are to it and what you can do with that and how um, how consistent you are with the practice, how well you do it, right, over time. So, yeah, so this, uh, in that being said with the traditional part, here's how we're going to use it for, in this case, the seeing 
application. So one of the big things is, uh, and you'll see where the string of this goes into many other, like say modern applications of this, right? Where it's like, uh, if we look at uh, somebody like uh, uh, Neville Goddard, right? It's like, you know, it's very important uh, of, you know, seeing what you're trying to achieve is already being completed rather than, you know, uh, praying about the process of it being completed, right? It's like it keeps you perpetually in the process as opposed to the end result. You're not wishing or hoping for it to for happen it. or asking for it to happen. No, like, you're assuming the position of that it's already done. You know, what is it, what is it like to be in that place, you know? And so, uh, you know, and this is the same kind of thing. So with the seeing aspect, it's more like, you know, what is it like to be a seer, you know? if I already could do this practice, if I could already see energy, how would I be doing these exercises? How would I do the four full breath? How would I do the gazing technique? How would I do the, you know, as somebody who could see already. And so this, you know, in this case, your, the God form that you're assuming is you in, let's say at this point, and like uh, for, <laughs> so that we can talk about it, right? We think that there's, it's all just one moment, but in this case, we're gonna say in the future, when you are a seer, let's say there's already an aspect of you that can do that. And so you're going to assume that form, you know, you already being able to do this process and already be able to do this technique, have this ability. So what would it feel like to be like that? You know, what would, it, what would your experience look like? You know, what would doing these exercises from that place, uh, you know, what, how would that change you? You know, how would you experience these exercises? What would be different about them? You'd want to go deeper. You'd want to make it stronger. You, you know, all of those things. Once you get through that, I can do it. You know, how do I make it better? <laughs> you know, it's like most people can throw football, but that's a long way from being a star quarterback, right? So it's like you want, you practice and practice all the abilities and, and get better and better at all the aspects of that so that you can then perform at that level. And so um, this is the same thing. And of course, when you do that, you're constantly, uh, you know, when you assume that form, it's going to be greater and greater, right? Because, you know, you as you get to a certain level, what you can what you're going to project into is going to be even stronger than that right it's going to you're going to be able to have you know the abilities that would be you know much farther reaching than what you would be what you could imagine in the beginning so you know as you continue along the process and you get better and better at each individual technique the culmination of all those smaller techniques are going to make you think well you know, how far can I take this? You know, what else can I do with this? You know, how much, you know, greater can I move into this? Is there, is there a, you know, a finite end to this, you know, where I'm, uh, you know, where that's it. I'm, you know, I could throw a football a hundred yards and, <laughs> you know, perfectly accurate every time, you know, is there, is there a finite end to this seeing ability as well? You know, how far can I push it? And, uh, um, you know, I'm not sure if there is, you know, it's like I utilize it for a lot of things. And so, um, and it, it's a tool for sure, but, uh, uh, but it's a, a very versatile tool for a lot of different reasons. So, so in assuming this God form, it's not, that's not going to be stagnant either. Right. So, uh, so the other part is that not just during the techniques that you're working on, not just the exercises, but also through the course of the day, right? How would I interact with this person if I could see the energy around them? How would I interact in my office if I could see the energy in my office and how it's moving? What would I do to enhance my, you know, like say I'm just feeling, I'm, I don't always get great work done in my office. It's like, okay, well, if I could see the energy in my office, it, can I adjust something in there, feng shui or however we think of it, right? Can I do something that will cause that to smooth out where let's say you do much better work at home in your home office? Well, what's, what does it look like in there energetically compared to the office at work, right? Is it just a different location or can you reproduce that in your office at work, mm. you know? And so being able to see would be able to do that, but let's say you can't do that yet let's say you don't have that ability yet. Can you assume that form? What would it feel like if you could? 
you know, this brings us to something that like I I'm really like I'm working on, you know, it's like, (laughs) it's like having that, um, that childlike attitude that you talk about a lot Mm -hmm. because I can hear a part of my brain thinking like, Oh, how is that different than just like pretending that you can see energy, you know, or like, you know, I mean, and in some ways it's elevating that like thing that everybody, well, a lot of people have done it as children, you know, like pretending to be a, fireman or right, right, <laughs> dressing right, right. up or you know, exactly. whatever you know and, yeah. and but but what you're saying is that that has an actual uh practical application or not a practical application but it it really it actually enhances our movement toward really being able to to do the things that we're trying to do and i think it's one of those I don't want to say obscure techniques, but, you know, because people know it as, you know, a lot of Western practitioners, esoteric practitioners know assuming the God form. I mean, how often they use it and they have different rules and regulations around it depending on their system. Um, But uh, I don't think they utilize it enough. You know, I don't think they think about the different applications that it could be used for. Or that they're using it in too much of a regimented way. Like this is way too much of a regimented or a, isolated way an right. isolated way is probably a much better word for it mm. because they're it's only in their chamber only in their practice and a lot of a lot of schools will say you have to you know uh disassociate yourself from that when before you leave you know it's like you don't want to carry to, that with you go you. in to do a ritual you put on the god form right then you take that off before you, before you leave that chamber right before you're done with the thing or whatever exactly it's just a stage of a very regimented ritual practice or whatever exactly which it can be right oh it can be for sure effect in that way i'm sure yeah i just you know i've I've asked this question of of practitioners who really you know they were trained that way and they're adamant about doing it you know they've really sort of been indoctrinated into like you have you know never leave the chamber (laughs) with this thing intact you know and um and i find it very odd you know really so it's like and it just sort of follow my logic, right? It's like, here you've identified something that is greater than you, supposedly. You know, at least in that form, that aspect is has some attribute or attributes that are further along than where you are at this moment. Otherwise, why would you entrain to something worse? Right, right. <laughs> you know, that doesn't work, right? <laughs> that dog don't hunt, right? So it's like, <laughs> so it's like, uh, so if 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 it's so much better than you, why wouldn't you want to take it out into the world? Why wouldn't you want to drive that vehicle around? It's sort of like, you know, when I hear people say like, you know, uh, I mean, some of them are serious about it. Some of them are tongue in cheek. Again, if I come back to like a Christian idea, it's like, what would Jesus do? You know, it's like, well, that's assuming that, y- y- you know, you're putting yourself in his place in your situation right now. That's a really sort of even though they wouldn't count it like that, it is assuming the God form, you know, it's like, oh, you want me to put my, you know, you want me to put myself in the shoes of Jesus Christ so that I can respond in a way that he would respond. Well, that's, you know, taking it into the world, right? And obviously not many people do that, but, but if they do do that and they really sort of have that thought process going on, they really are assuming the God form in, in, technically well i think that for me like i can just hear you know the idea like that that that's almost like a a holy thing and i would not want to bring it into like a profane situation or like a mundane situation where it's like you know it's like keeping it sacred because it's only in in my i do you know i do it in my practice or do it in church or whatever but then to bring it out into the world would be like or you know you're you're in a situation where you're having a conversation with somebody and they're cursing or it's appropriate to curse in that conversation to put emphasis on that thing but if i'm embodying something greater than myself or something i deem to be holy or sacred it's like i'm you know doing a bad thing by you know kind of you know bringing it down or mixing those 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 two things it's like right. you know in their head in, in i can imagine in some people's heads it would be almost like oil and water or you know yeah i don't know i'm I, for some reason that popped into my head so that's why i'm saying it. i mean i know that we've talked about that and 
And, right. and you're not thinking about it that way and you're not instructing it to be that way, but just it popped into my head, so. Right, because a lot of people, I mean, that's their reasoning for it. And again, I mean, not to th throw too much disparaging thing, but I think it's sh a shit comment, you know, because it's like that really perpetuates this idea of duality, right? That, oh, my room in my house is sacred, but outside is not. It's like, what the? F is that all about? It's like, you know, that's one of the real, you know, like I'm sacred, but you're not, uh, you know, you know, my race is sacred, but you're not, you know, it's like, I mean, it just, it, you can take that out into such a, you know, horrific territory, really, if you want to, you know, it's like, I think those ideas have really, you know, they can be perverted into just about any kind of horrible aberration that you want you know it's like no there's nothing sacred or not sacred about anything you know it's like you know I mean let's put it a different way you know to me everything is sacred you know being alive is sacred and <laughs> being on this earth is sacred you know being able to do any of this work is sacred you know it's like uh, being involved with people is sacred it's like why wouldn't you want to be at you know your best at any given situation you know it doesn't it doesn't make any sense to me it's like i go back to you know the the idea that uh you know in ancient ancient egypt not you know not modern but ancient egypt really far back in those times uh, you know and it's like they didn't have a word for religion it was just part of what they did in the day it's like everybody knew you know to see farmers you know having their fields blessed or you know blessing the food that came in you know doing the sacrifices for the you know crops and and, and for you know sick people and it just it was incorporated into your daily existence you didn't go through a day without engaging it in some way speaking to angels or god or spirits or helpers or whatever would right. be like a totally just like they're talking to that just as much as you, you talk would talk to, your, to your your neighbor right yeah. i mean it, and nobody would think that that was an odd thing yeah it, right it, because it was just part of daily existence right there wasn't a separation you know between those things oh well, here's my regular family life and here's my you know spiritual life or whatever no it was all integrated you know and so you know there wasn't like a category for it it was life you know this is how we do to you know sort of uh you know be in harmony with our experience you know with our environment and ourselves and how do we blend that together i mean i mean it is one of the primary things uh that I think, you know, how people have separated this stuff out. And one of the things that we're trying to solve with this, these courses, right, is that, look, how do we, you know, it's very nice to do all of these exercises and maybe you're getting something out of it, you know, doing it, you know, hold up in a closet in your house. But it's like, if you can't bring it into the world, at least the benefits, you know, it's like, what the hell good is it? I mean, how often, you know, how many hours a day are you going to spend in the closet? <laughs> you know, it's like, that's just an insane idea, right? It's like, okay, I've got uh, 22 hours of shit out in the real world and two hours of really nice stuff in, in my closet. You know, it's like, it, it's, 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 a, it's a wacky idea, really. You know, when you just, you take it out to the extremes and it's just, it's, then it sounds crazy. Well, don't make it so extreme and just look at your day-to-day -day existence. You know, it's like, why wouldn't you want to be your very best in every situation? Mm -hmm. And if that means identifying with something that would be, you know, your best, I mean, it's like, what do you think kids are doing when they, you know, when they're like, hey, I want to, you know, I'm going to be the quarterback on the team, I'm, you know, and they imagine themselves being Roger Staubach or whatever, you know, it's like, <laughs> or, or whatever, right? I don't right? know who it's that like, is, but. <laughs> I don't even know if I got the guy's name right because I don't follow sports, but, you know, I'm a quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys, you know, back in the day when things, you know, <laughs> but it's like all the, you know, pick somebody, you know, Pele, you know, pick, you know. <laughs> Clearly, we're not big sports Christian fans. Christian Ronaldo, <laughs> you know, it's like, I mean, my kids are soccer players, so, okay. but, but that's the idea, you know, so what does it mean to like, and not just admire them, but imagine you, that you are that person and all of a sudden they have the best game of their life. They're not always making the correlation between the two mm. things, but as adults, we can and say, look, you know, since I started doing this practice, are, in general, are my days better? Am I, you know, um, 
a, you know, am I getting through certain uh, challenges in my day in an easier and smoother way? And are they coming less often because of that? That's always a good thing to, you know, I mean, I'm about, you know, the practicality, the results are important, you know. <sighs> You, know, you need a metric to figure this out. Like, I think that's another one of those things where it's like, you know, we've, we've sort of steered away from that. It's almost like, again, to, because it's sacred, we don't want to actually check it out. It's like, I think that's bullshit. You know, it's like, it's just so much crap. You know, it's like, you need to have a metric that you can, you know, regulate this and figure it out and, and measure it. And, 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 you know, is it helping you or is it not? If it's not, you need to find something else. You know, <laughs> I don't care if you were brought up in that, raised in that, Tradition. you spent, you know, 10 years studying it somewhere else or mm -hmm. whatever. If it ain't working, you got to change it up. You got to find something that will help you. And when you're helped and you're doing well, that's going to relate to your family, your friends, your community at large and the world. That's the thing. It's a huge responsibility. But what's the other approach? You know throw everything away and just say, oh, screw it. I'm just, I'm just living until I die. And I don't care if I have a miserable existence or not. I can complain and bitch and moan about this, that, and the other thing. And it's like, I give up. It's like, okay, how's that working for you? You know, that's, that's pretty miserable for, for all the things that you've been given in this life. And I don't care who you are. You know, it's like, if you're drawing breath, you've been given a gift. <laughs> so it's like, utilize it, you know, make it better. Um, so, uh, but I think this is, you know, again, one of those techniques that uh, instead of just keeping it, you know, I mean, yes, do it, you know, get it figured out in the context of a controlled scenario, right? I'm not saying start it in your office <laughs> at noon tomorrow, you know, <laughs> it's like, no, 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 put it in a controlled environment so you can really get the feel for it. But then once you have it and you've seen that it's giving you some, uh, you know, giving you some benefit, even if it's just a benefit for your head in the beginning, you just feel better when you're doing that. That's already a huge plus. Like you feel more confident doing. The yeah. I mean, it's or... like, like I've, I've done it with a few things where it's like, you know, obviously I've been doing this a long time. So it's like, and, and because I'm so results oriented, it's like, you know, I can pinpoint these things. Like I'll say like, okay, if I've, you know, Normally my routine is, uh, let's just say in this instance, like I've got one day a week that I really do a lot of financial work. And so, you know, and that's not my forte, really. I mean, it's like, I'm not an accountant. I don't have that kind of degree or anything like that. I mean, I know the basics, but probably no more than anybody else. And, um, and so, uh, and it's not something that I relish doing. So what, um, what God form, would actually perform that in a much better way, you know? So identify that and then assume that, you know, put yourself in that place and then go and do your work and see, does everything, you know, and here's my experience. Everything makes more sense. Everything goes a lot quicker than I normally would do it. And I've had experience in doing it without that prior. So I had a benchmark to go by. And then, you know, it's like things made more sense, you know, it's, and, and things went much quicker and I didn't feel, feel nearly as fatigued. In fact, it was sort of like, you know, got a little giddy in the middle of it, you know, like, whoa, this is like no problem. You know, maybe it's like, whoa, don't, don't get too full of yourself. You know, <laughs> it's like, you know, sure. don't make a mistake. Yeah, yeah, know? yeah. So working on the books is not, you know, just some fun loving thing to do, especially for you. I mean, keep it real, but, but that's the idea, but it was, you know, it went much smoother. So mm. why, why would I not use that for that purpose again? I mean, you know, and people, I think people, they don't, sometimes they're using it, I think they're using things like that and they're, I hear about it more in, um, let's say, like the secret and those types of practices, manifestation practices where they're like, oh, you know, just be this person when you're doing that. Or sometimes even in business, you know, rather like, oh, well, think about your business plan, review your business plan as if you were, I don't know, uh, 
somebody high, you know, uh, somebody high up in business. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's like, you know, so it doesn't have to be a dead deity, you know, or a, you know, a deity that was long ago or whatever. I mean, it can be somebody modern, and it can be somebody who's still alive. You know, like, you know, maybe you're looking at, uh, you know, musical contracts. Well, you know, how about Richard Branson? You know, it's like, can I assume that form? And, we know his his proclivities is you know basically to have fun. I mean, he stated himself himself in many books. If it's not fun, I don't do it. And so you know, if you have that sort of maybe a little more uh, you know serious or morose attitude about business, you know, it's like maybe you could benefit from that balance and and look at that a little bit more. Maybe you'd have a little more fun doing it. You so know, so what you're saying is people should assume the Brian form. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why <laughs> they might run away screaming if they actually got in there, but but you know, but something like that, you know, it's like look at the people that you admire, and it's like what do you admire about them? It's mm. you know, we like can, like if you're really into the Castaneda books or something, you can yeah. be like I, you know, absolutely, you know, from all the stories that he tells of Don Juan, you know either seeing or dreaming or doing something fantastic it's like right and so and here's the other part of that like from the modern you know where we're going with it now the modern version of it like okay so the traditional would be like here i have this very traditional image let's say of toth or of uh, christ or whatever it's like how it's been depicted mm -hmm. right so or one of the angels how they've been depicted you know they have these attributes and they have you know this sort of uh, you know the way their clothes are the colors that are around them you know all of that you would assume that, well, with somebody like uh, Don Juan, I mean, we, you can imagine maybe what he looks like. And everyone mm. has probably a, an image in their mind of what that is, but they don't really know, mm -hmm. right? There's no depictions of him anywhere that we know of. So, um, you know, so you make it a little bit more, you know, a little bit more generic in a way. You know, like you, you think about the ideals, right? It's like you get a flavor for his personality, and uh you know the sort of the when he's serious and when he's not when he's kind of pissed off at him and forceful and when he's very compassionate and loving and you know you get this conglomerate of a personality around it and so you know whenever i get something like that it's like i just put a basic form there like for me if it's some if it's a person it's easy to to do it as a sort of a generic form like and my experience is is that you know, those forms tend to come to life to some degree, you know, so if I see this sort of, uh, you know, peasant, you know, native, yaki, Indian, Mexican, you know, with the sort of the old style, and I'm sure that I'm just sort of, it's in my head, right? It's not like a slam against anybody. It's just sort of like, I have this generic idea in my head of like, darker skin, pretty, pretty wrinkled, you know, and, and uh, you know, tall and thin, and 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 muscular, you know, flexible, athletic, you know, and uh, but can you know can really sort of mimic any form, and and um, uh, and all of those you know put together the characteristics of them from the books or whatever that you think, right, and uh, you know, so that when I'm you know doing some of those practices that are out in nature or whatever that might be a good form to assume, you know, because it's, uh, you're more connected, you know, it's like, uh, you know, you're, you're looking at the signs in nature that would, you know, mean something to you, you know, those types of things. Um, if I were doing that, if I were thinking about, uh, you know, compassion or healing, I might choose somebody else or something else, right, and, and sort of identify with that. But it doesn't have to be like, oh, I don't know what that entity would look like so I can't do this. It's like, no, you, 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 you get a generic sort of form. Like if I'm trying to do this with something angelic, it's like I never go with the classic forms. I go with spheres, you know, just a sphere of light with the corresponding colors so that, you know, it's basically when that thing is there and depending on how well I do it, right, it will differentiate into what it wants. You know, it's like I don't, I'm not forcing it into my own container. I'm just, I'm giving it, you know, spheres tend to be, you know, the generic form of energy when it's not actually an aspect of something, you know. And when you're doing it with th this for seeing specifically, 
and it's the idea is to embody your future self mm -hmm. that can already see to to the degree that you'd like to be able to or right. whatever uh, has mastery in that area yeah um it, i mean it seems like even even simpler or even more straightforward because it's like oh i can totally imagine what I would be like if I could do that. Yeah. I mean, when I do those things, the first thing that comes to mind is like, I'm just kind of jazzed. You know? Yeah, <laughs> right. Pumped, you know? Right, right, right. But I mean, it's the same thing, right? Like if, you know, if, if you were going to have somebody, let's say you were going to have somebody um, paint a picture of you and you were going to, you know, they were like, well, you know, let me model, you know, model for me or whatever. It would be like, well, it's not the me right now, but it's a future me that I would, well, what does it look like? What, you know, what are the characteristics? How do you stand? How do you move? You know, what do you look like? You know, I mean, do you have a goatee? Do you, you know, but you're clean shaven right now. Do you have a full head of hair? But, you know, uh, maybe you'll be bald later, you know, or you shave your head or, you know, do you wear glasses? Do you not? You know, all of those things, you know, what, what is that ideal form that you think that you would be like if you could see, like if you could just go, boom, I'm in that spot, you know, what what would you appear like, you know? And so, you know, you have some, it'll, it'll it's a great exercise to give you some insights into yourself as well. Like, mm. oh, you know, gee, I don't, you know, maybe I've lost 20 pounds, <laughs> you know, maybe I've, you know, all of these things. I look like this. If I could see and I could see the energy of the food that I'm eating and see that this is bad and this is good, I'm going for the good stuff because now I can actually see it, mm -hmm. you know, and so I'm going to be able to trim down and I'm going to be able to do, you know, so, okay, so what does that look like to you? You know, mm -hmm. how do you seem, you know, do, are your eyes brighter? You know, do you look like you're sharper? Do you, you know, are you, are you more like maybe you're, maybe you're, you know, quick off the mark to, you know, give somebody a snide comment back. And now in that state, you're a little more reserved because you can see what, you know, what effect that's going to have on them or what effect it has on people when you do that. And, and even on yourself when you do that and the, and the blowback from that. Right. So it's like all of those things, it's something to think about, you know, and really sort of, if you can encapsulate it even badly in the beginning, right. But you just sort of put it out there and, assume that and then you know do your exercises from that standpoint and not just your exercises but let's say you take you know a part of your day and say okay i'm going to assume that form for lunchtime and so you know and then when you're eating lunch whether you're eating alone or whether you're eating with other people or around other people you know and then as you're eating you're looking around as the seer that you are and you know what does everything look like are you noticing you know, patches of light, are you noticing, you know, uh, we'll talk about, say about sparks, you know, like little, little bright, uh, literally like sparks that, you know, just sort of come in, into view very quickly and, and disappear, you know, sure. it's like all of these things. And, you know, do you sense or feel a flow of energy around the room? You know, all of those things, you, you experience your environment in a much different way from that form than you would from you know and it's like people don't make it too complex in your head sure it's sort of like think about it like this you know this I, when people really have a hard time putting in in context in their mind like oh god what's that going to be like it's like look what's the difference between you standing here in the room in this room and you've got a view of the room bring a two-foot step ladder in here and stand on the top of that and view the room it's a different view, same room, same body, different position of view, right? So the room looks different from that height, even if from two feet up from where you are normally looking at it, right? It's the same thing with this. You will, because you're assuming that other form, you will see things differently than you would if you were just in your normal form, right. let's say. So that will, you know, and it's, it's a fascinating exercise because it will give you really incredible insights into your practice into your being and you know and what am i going to do to enhance this it'll give you different um uh different uh different ideas of where you need work rather than where you where you think you need work from this position 
you know. So being in the assuming that form will give you different insights in what you need work on in order to achieve that and make that better than it would be in the mindset that you are right here right now. Because you get a, like a higher resolution idea of those qualities that you're truly embodying when you're when you have the ability to right, do that. Right. A lot of things that you know the friction that comes is the parts that are not jibing. Right. Like you can't get over it. You know, it's like oh, I'm assuming. You know, and like you said, you know, oh, I feel like I'm just pretending. And it's like yeah, but a little more than that because you're actually trying to be look through those eyes. Mm. And it's like there and there will be points in that where there's going to be more friction than others. Some like things I can't gonna, put myself in that state because I'm. I don't feel comfortable. I can't let go or, of this certain feeling, or I can't. It doesn't. Yeah. yeah, I feel like, odd. I feel like everybody's watching. I feel like me, I'm or, pretending. I feel <laughs> right? like I'm faking it, or or just I'm not comfortable. You know, I'm. You know, this person would be comfortable in doing mm. this, and I'm not comfortable. Right. Is it a physical discomfort? Then you need a little more physical work. Mm. You know, is it? You know, I'm just not comfortable keeping my back straight that long. Well, you need some back exercises. You need to work that out. Mm. You know, you need to do that, and that's going to and it's going to give you insight of what you need to do to be that. You know, so mm. it's again, you know, what does it look like if you knew that that thing was inevitable? You know, if that was the end point that you wanted to be inevitable, to be that seer, not somebody else, you, you know, what, what are the things I need to work on to get myself into that place? Who would I have to be? Who would I have to be? You know, so, and, you know, it'll give you great insights right. you know without yes, right. without somebody else interpreting and going well you know yeah you could you lose a, a couple work pounds on, yeah. but it's like no it's just like dude get off your ass stop eating bonbons and get to the gym you know it's <laughs> but like, you're saying that to yourself as you're your saying it to yourself yeah 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 which is it's yeah. not somebody else dictating to you you're saying here's what i want and you're telling yourself well then this is what you need to do right it's almost like your future self saying to you, right. this is what you need to do to right. be this now, yes. you know? And so, you know, you, and I find that people take it a lot more seriously. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a great, you know, it's just, there's sitting, so many things that this is good for. Sitting down, taking the time to ask yourself those questions or even ask your future self those questions, phrase it that way. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's another, you know. What do a, I have to do? What it's do a I have technique to adjust? In that, what do I have to right. stop doing? What do I have to start doing? What do I, you know. Asking I... yourself those questions, you know, from a future p position is, you know, is, is another technique that's really valuable. Mm-hmm. You know, what's going on here? What am I missing? <laughs> yeah. You'll tell yourself. Right. You know, <laughs> you, you will. You there, will tell yourself. Yes. <laughs> and there will be no bars held. Right. You know, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it'll be like, <laughs> right. You know, it's like, idiot, you know, this is what you're not doing. Right. Or this is what you're doing too much of. Or right. this is, you know. And then to that point, I think one of the most powerful things you said earlier when we were preparing for the, you know, film, filming the segment mm -hmm. was, um, you know, when you're sitting down to do the exercise after you've assumed that future self form, you're doing it as somebody who can already see, not somebody who's trying to see. Right. Which is for me was like, yeah. Yeah. Cause you've <laughs> eliminated that like, barrier. Right? I can't even think of the last time. I can't think of a time where I sat down to do a practice where I wasn't like trying to I achieve hope I something. Can do this. It, it, or, yeah, 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 yeah. With that attitude, you know, it's like right. Oh man. So basically what you're saying is <laughs> You just wasted seven years. Yeah. No, 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 no. no. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the idea. So right. I, I, it's an extremely valuable technique. Yeah. You know, to do that and to to put yourself to put yourself in that place. Mm -hmm. You know, for many reasons. Right. You know, it's again, and again, you know, <clears throat> why, you know, like I said in the beginning, when we get to the end of it, it's sort of like, you know, what are the things you don't want to do? Well, you don't want to, um, you know, to just in every situation, put yourself in that, in a, f in a future place, right? It's like, you know, you don't want to walk around in that every day, all day long, those type you know, that type of thing. It's sort of like, don't abuse the technique, right? Like, oh, I can't, 
I'm not going to go to this class unless I can assume the Einstein form or whatever it is. It's like, I mean, if you can and you want to, you know, do that. But it's like, it's not like you don't want to make it into a fear-based practice where it's like, oh, I can't go out now. I'm not in my John Travolta form or whatever. I can't go dancing tonight. You know, it's like, <laughs> whatever. You know, so, uh, you know, it should be something that... Uh, you know, you utilize, you know, and uh, it doesn't become the only technique that you use. You'll, you'll find that there are certain ones that you're going to acclimate to very easily and others that are going to take a little bit more time. Um, but the technique is so, um, it can be used for so many applications that you're going to f feel like at some point, like, wow, why don't I just assume all these forms for everything, you know, and, and be that. And... In some ways, yes. In some ways, no. You know, you still, you want to use it as a sort of a, a testing point to know, again, what you need to do to bring yourself to that point, mm -hmm. right? Even if you're using, you know, a Christ figure or some deity or angelic thing, it's like, what are the attributes you're trying to entrain to? And how do I bring myself to that place? Yeah, this is a nice model, but how do I bring myself there? You know, it's like, you know, you play with a great tennis player and it's like, you know, it's like, yeah, they're fantastic. They're wiping the court with you, right? But it's like you're you're looking at that and you're thinking, okay, you know, here's what I need to do in order to get better to be able to compete with this person or to be able to play at a competitive level with this person. You know, it's like you're analyzing and looking at it and going, oh, okay. You know, it's like you might even ask them a question, right? If you've dropped that part of yourself that can do that. I mean, it was, you know, that's one of those things that's a big stepping stone, right? You don't be shy about asking people, you know, how do you do that? You know, it's like, that's, that's a great thing and will cut your learning curve way down, right? If you can just sort of like, don't, don't worry about not being able to do something. Don't be so shy that, you know, you, that, that you can't admit that you can't do something or you, you know, that you're making mistakes on it. It's like, you're trying to, you know, bring yourself to a different level. It's like, you know, ask, you know, it's like, that's, nobody's going to go like, <laughs> that's the, you can't do that. Oh man, you suck. You know, it's like, no, it's, it's like you're cutting, you you know, you're cutting your learning curve down. You're doing everything you can to maximize the time that you have here to bring yourself to the greatness that you want to achieve. And so anything you can do to cut that curve down is huge. And I think a lot of people waste a lot of time because they're just, you know, they won't admit that they they can't do something or it's not working out the way they want it to. And it's like, there's nothing wrong with that. It's like, you know, the people that I see that get the farthest in this are the people that say like, wow, I'm really having a hard time with this visualization or I'm really having a hard time with this sitting down or whatever it is. So it's like, uh, you know, ask, <laughs> cut it down. That'll be, that'll be much better for you. That's it. So, uh, yeah. So that's the idea with that. Basically. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it can be refined in a lot of different ways and I'm sure we'll go over it and we'll get a lot of questions about it, but yeah, I mean, it is a pretty, it's a big idea, but yeah, you gotta start simply and right, go right. from there. Yeah. And I think it's important that we kind of got it in somewhere near the beginning of this because you know, as we've uh, had conversations even about other techniques and preparing to uh, begin those courses at some point, it's like that's something that is going to be woven into oh, yeah. everything. And yep. The more we, do, the more we do it, and the more you get comfortable with it, the the better we'll be able to weave it into everything we do. Right. Exactly. I mean, you know, I mean, I want people to think about it. You know, I mean, do it, yes, but I want them to actually think about you know the other applications that it could be used for because mm -hmm. it's like it's it is a very valuable technique so. yeah 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 and i know when it comes to and you mentioned this in the beginning like the um neville goddard stuff it's like you know uh, imagine the wish fulfilled and you know that's kind of his like, right battle cry and and so uh but i feel like i you know i know from personal experience and from other people um, that are practicing that or using that, it's like, it's, it's, a uh, it's, it can be a hurdle to really reframe it 
from imagining something to you know as a way of adding energy to try to make something happen and, and still having that stance of like I'm not there yet I'm imagining it so that I can you know bring it into being instead of you know that that dissolving blending thing that happens where it you know you really feel that it's it's already done that you are that that you you're you're capable of that it's it is done you yeah, know you, i am you that. embody that yeah you know and there's a big difference between that huge yeah so. it's the difference between actually having the result manifest and not <laughs> right and it can be very frustrating you know because especially oh, when those messages resonate on a very deep level but then for some reason we're not quite getting it to happen or it's not working for us or and again you know, i think part of it's just our you know the way the language is devolving you know for lack of a better way i mean it's sort of been a thing for me for a long time you know where we use terms and other people use terms but they they'll put things you know they'll put uh, words together that they'll use them synonymously and they're not there's differentiations between them and so the same thing with with concepts like that too even more so like you know the wish fulfilled and the you know the you know be at that place where it's already done and they're like well if i don't know what having money is like how would i know what that feels like and it's like okay you know there's a disconnect there and so it becomes you know it sounds simple and then people again coming back to that last idea that i said people they don't want to it sounds so simple people don't want other people to think that you know they're even simpler than that you know that they can't get it you know that they don't get that simple concept but they're not as simple as you think you know the, the concept the concepts of you know like okay you know that sounds you know the words sound easy right but it's, in practice in practice they're not that easy you and know? that's and the it's difference like, where you... and and you really need to understand it right so when you understand it even if you understand it if you understand it well, but your practice is a little bit sloppy in the beginning, that's better than n not really understanding what you're doing at all and trying to make it perfect. It's like or putting a shitload of energy into it yeah. in an incorrect way because you don't really understand the nuances. Right. Of yeah. You need to. You practice. need to understand it and make sure that the concepts are clear in your mind before you practice it. You know, and it's like I still, you know, I mean, my battle cry is do it you know mm -hmm. do it badly if you but do it you know mm -hmm. because that will get the momentum of doing you know in place rather than just you know armchair theorist you know it's like you know it's it's not the same thing you know i know plenty of those guys too and it's like they still you know complain about life and it's like they have the concepts down they can quote you know chapter and verse of a lot of the books that i reference but but to actually put it into practice, they don't, they can't, they don't do anything. It's not that they can't, they don't. <laughs> Obviously they have the theory in the background, they've got the concepts down, but they don't put it into practice. Mm -hmm. So and how are you gonna manifest right, that? Right, right, and even practicing poorly or with the wrong understanding in the beginning for a while, even experiencing that frustration of doing it wrong or whatever can be of value later because then when you you know, hear it the right way or ask the question on a call or whatever and you say the right thing to just kind of tweak it and it's like, oh, now I get it. And when you apply it and then it clicks and everything works, it's like sometimes I feel like those experiences can perhaps be even more valuable than it just working seamlessly right from the beginning. Right. I mean, you, you, you work out the details, you know, then it's just the, you know, of course those little nuances really can tweak a lot, right? It's not like, you know, okay, I've got the, I've got the, you know the the big concepts down and I'm making it work but maybe it's not so elegant you know so the nuances make it elegant you know and and tweak it to your personality too right because again the practice becomes idiosyncratic right it's like that's the whole thing it's not it's not cookie cutter for every person the principles are the same but our little variations on how our life experience play into that and make it personal for us every single person you know if they if they go through these practices and they're you know developing their own practice you know they're developing a practice it will become personally their own at some point right we don't we don't 
push that idea so much in the beginning because we don't want them just to be willy-nilly. That's the New Age movement. Remember? It's just like there's no concepts, there's no core. It's just like whatever you do it's is good and whatever you want, it's all good. You know, yeah. it's all good. Oh, yeah. No, it's not all good. You know, you need some structure before you can really work these things. And then, you know, and then when you really have it down and the structure is no longer needed, that dissolves away and becomes, I'm not going to say completely free form, but it it matches you perfectly you know it, it's your practice well this we principally still. do the same things but i guarantee you that the way that i structure something we could have the same end result i structure something slightly differently than the way you would because my life experience is different than yours our point of references are different right we use the same principle we'll get the same result but it will be slightly different in the way we frame it in our minds to get that result mm -hmm. so but and that's that's important to know but there is structure there you know otherwise again no structure no metrics you know it's like you can't how do you evaluate something mm -hmm. you know and it's like it just becomes play you know with with you know no end result and if it's just you know if you're just a hobbyist and you're just like doing it to see if it works and oh it's fun or you know this is cool practice or <laughs> you know it's like I could think of other things that are cooler that to do for, for you know that are a hell of a lot less work you know uh, just for fun you know I mean but that's just me maybe somebody just thinks this is fun and it's like oh I'm just gonna tinker with this and that's good but if you're gonna actually utilize it in your life and you want to make it consistent it's work you know there is work and you know and it's not all easy stuff you know and it's not all whiz bang phenomena going on all over you know it's like and even if it is in the beginning you're 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 acknowledging it and you're letting that go you're not chasing the phenomena the phenomena is just a signpost that you're getting somewhere it has nothing to do with anything really just letting you know that you're on the right track you know it's like oh i've left the sidewalk i'm in the forest now <laughs> You know, I know because there's trees around me, but I'm not going like, oh, it's the trees. I'm just going to hug trees now. It's like, no, you're trying to get someplace in the forest, right? It's like you're not like, you'll never get to your spot if you just, you know, you're distracted by every little thing that's going on. And, you know, and even though most people don't, uh, you know, they don't have a lot of that, like, let's say, psychic phenomena going on in their lives on a regular basis, although they probably do. They're just not recognizing it. You know, you don't want to make that your focus because you lose, you, you'll be off the path. You'll be, you know, you just, that will be your end result is like you're just a phenomena seeker, like these ghost hunters or whatever. You know, it's like, what are they doing with that? You know, besides making a buck, you know, some of them make a good buck doing that, you know, or, or satisfying the curiosity in their head. But is it really serving any other purpose? You know, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just asking the question. Maybe it is for them. I, I have no idea. But uh, it doesn't appear to be so from the outside looking in. But, you know, so it's like the phenomena. Yeah. I mean, we utilize it as a signpost. But other than that, we don't really, it's not really of any concern. I don't want to waste my energy there. Remember, every time I attach to something, I, I'm feeding it energy. It's like mm -hmm. I need my energy to you know, to attach to the the end result that I want to produce. So it's like, and this is very much doing that. Yeah, I mean, putting your attention and your energy and attaching to the end result you want by embodying that future self. Yeah, because I mean, you know what would be? You I mean that's the ultimate, right? Yeah, that's that's the ultimate of like. What is it, you know, what does it look like from the end point of the end result? Well, you're embodying the end result, even if it's just mentally at this point. Sure. You know, but physically you start to change yourself and now you become physically part of that end result. And, sure. You know, and on and on and on. And the techniques get, you know, more profound and you're getting better results. And, you know, pretty soon you're embodying that, not in your mind. You are that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like... I don't see, a, I can't imagine a more practical technique to do that. So, you know, as long as, again, as long as we stay focused on the end result of what am I trying to achieve and, you know, why am I doing it? You know, what's my end result? So, yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> Onward and upward. Onward and upward. <laughs>